Welcome to this time together with God and this wonderful opportunity that we have properly distanced and masked to be together with brothers and sisters in Christ. It's, it's a real blessing to be able to be here. Last week we heard about disciples and followers of God who listened. Samuel listened to God's call. Philip listened to Jesus and became one of the 12 disciples. And then he promptly went out and brought his friend Nathaniel to Jesus so he could become a believer too. And Nathaniel, without being asked, without being formally called, became one of the 12. This week, we get Jonah. <laughs> in the Old Testament lesson. Jonah, who heard the call of God, packed his bags and ran the other way. <laughs> but God had a whale of a lesson planned for him, didn't he? Yeah. He was thrown into the water but didn't drown. He was swallowed by a whale but didn't get digested. And he was thrown up back on dry land so that he could get on with it. And Jonah learned what it meant to be called by God. And he changed. And he accepted the call. And he went and did what God wanted him to do. And that can happen to us too. You see, God calls us to do many things in our life. Sometimes we don't hear the call because we're not listening. Um, if I would ask you at the end of each day, if I were here as your resident pastor, if I would ask you at the end of each day when I'd phone or drop over to see you, um, so what God sighting did you have today? <laughs> Maybe you'll say, ooh, God saying, ooh, <laughs> kind of forgot. But each day we should look for God and look for the call of God. Because as we're going to talk about in the sermon today, you might have one vacancy pastor who's like a shepherd to the flock, but you're all ministers and you all have a call from God to serve him in this way or that way, and maybe unusual ways that you didn't think he wanted you to do. So we're gonna talk about that today. And we're gonna talk about how sometimes when God calls us or gives us an opportunity to serve him in a, in a special way, um, we look back to our past and we want to maybe do our thing instead of God's thing. The sermon today is entitled Remembrance, Nostalgia, and The Mission. And it's all about God's call to you, his ministers, his children, his people. Would you all please stand? And we'll begin in God's name. We begin this week once again in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
I see a face in every sunrise. The colors of the morning are inside your eyes. The world awakes to the light of the day. I look into the sky and say, you're beautiful. I see your power in the moonlit night Where planets are in motion and galaxies are bright We are amazed in the light of the stars It's all proclaiming who you are You're beautiful You
Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Upon this your confession, I, as a called and ordained servant of God's word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I assure you that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. Almighty and everlasting God, mercifully look upon our infirmities and stretch forth the hand of your majesty to heal and defend us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Jonah, I've heard a lot of mocking and scoffing about uh, this story, but I got my own theory. Uh, see, God prepared a great fish, and uh, probably was a blue whale, and the blue whale's heart alone weighs two, can weigh two and a half tons, so that's a big fish, and. Uh, so he prepared the fish, brought it alongside the boat, because he had commanded it. And the people were desperate because the ship was about to sink. 
And he said, you throw me over and the, it will calm down. Okay, they chucked him and right into the blowhole. And the Jonah thought, oh, I swallowed by a big fish. And he thought he was in the belly. But uh, so <clears throat> it's not impossible. Besides, it would be a miracle still because God controlled everything. And he even told the fish, you go to the beach there and there and you vomit them out or he probably sneezed and now he comes. Yeah, I can run, you can run, but we cannot hide from God. And when he calls, when he figures, we, we can be useful to him. It'll go with us like with Saul of Tarsus, that later on was called Paul. He knocked them off his heart. We, he can knock us off our feet too. So this is uh, the Jonah uh, chapter 3. 1 to 5 and verse 10. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a, a second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey. In breath, Jonah began to go into the city, <clears throat> going a day's journey, and he called out, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast and put on sackcloth, from the greatest of them to the least of them. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God relented the disaster that he had said he would, would do to them, and he did not do it. This is the world of our, the word of our God. Finds rest in God alone, my rock and my salvation, a fortress strong against my foe, and I will not be shaken. Though lips may bless and hearts may curse, and lies like arrows pierce me, I'll fix my heart on righteousness. I'll look to him who hears me. Find a rest, my soul, in God alone. Amid the world's temptations, when evil seeks to take a hold, I'll cling to my salvation. Come and riches go. Don't set your heart upon them. The fields of hope in which I sow are harvested in heaven. Crush the curse of death and 
Testament lesson comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, 29 to 35. This is what I mean, brothers. The appointed time has grown very short, hasn't it ever? From now on, let those who have wives live as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing and those who buy as though they had no goods, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. I want you to be free from anxieties. The unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to please the Lord. But the married man is anxious about worldly things, how to please his wife, and his interests are divided. And the unmarried and unbetrothed woman is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to be holy in body and spirit. But the married woman is anxious about worldly things, how to please her husband. I say this for your own benefit, not to lay any restraint upon you, but to promote good order and to secure your undivided devotion to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Let's stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel for today is recorded in Mark chapter 1, beginning at verse 14. After John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little further, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boat mending the nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat and the hired servants and they followed Jesus. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Please be seated. Jonah 3, verses 1 to 3. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. In 1976, it happened. 
1984, it happened. In 1991, it happened again. Like Jonah, after his struggle, I finally got moving and went to the new city that God had called me to, to minister. And each time that Marilyn and I followed the call of God, it was really hard, really hard. Hard to leave behind the memories, hard to leave behind the friendships, the family of faith, and go to a new place where we didn't know anyone and maybe they would or wouldn't want to know us. If it was hard to leave, then why did we do it? Well, because the Lord called. And Marilyn and I have learned that when the Lord calls, <laughs> you do your best to listen and listen carefully and do what he wants you to do, not just what you want to do. God's call is very unexpected. I remember back in 1976 in Bramley, Ontario, February, when I got a phone call from a former parishioner from, from the church there who had moved out to Calgary. So I got a call from Archie Woodell in Calgary. And he said, would you consider a call to Calgary? No, I said in my own way. I'm not finished with my ministry here in Bramalee. Well, <laughs> that was me talking. And God had different plans. And I remember uh, as the weather warmed up, we were sitting in the Clairview Conservation Area, sitting on a picnic table, looking out at the lake there, saying, yeah, how is the ministry going here in Bramley? And we both realized that we had sort of hit a plateau So, later on, God sent a call to Prince George, British Columbia. Prince George? Where was Prince George? Both Marilyn and I thought it was on the coast, but we found out that Prince George was right in the dead center of the province. And that was the Lord calling. The congregation, Connaught Hill Lutheran Church in Prince George had dismissed their pastor. And they really needed help rebuilding. The blessing was that God had sent an interim pastor, Fred Scholey. And Fred Scholey, who was the first president of Lutheran Church Canada, as I recall. He, uh, he spent about a year there, helping them get their bearings again, so that when I came, I could stay. <laughs> Otherwise, I might have been in there for a month or two, and, and it just wouldn't have worked. You know, you need a buffer sometimes. You need someone to, to deal with all the all the calamity and, and, and get the congregation ready to have a pastor, a resident pastor. Well, we went there and uh, it, uh, it was tough when we got there. But first I'll tell you, it was tough to get there because I remember sitting in Bramalee when we got this... Um, call to Prince George and one day we were ready to go and the other day we weren't and one day we would say yeah that's God's will no I don't think it is and we were just going back and forth so finally Marilyn and I decided we would go to Redeemer Lutheran Church in Bramalee our church and we would sit 
in front of the altar. And we pulled some chairs up and we sat down facing the altar and looking around and we said, God, we're going to make a decision on this call that you've given to Prince George. Should we go there or should we stay here? Is this the place you want us to be or do you want us to be there? And we said to each other, we're not going to leave here till we have an answer. <laughs> we'll sleep here if we have to overnight. We're, we're not leaving till we know. So both Marilyn and I sat there, we prayed, and then we sat there for the longest time looking around and praying silently. And then I looked at Marilyn and she looked at me and we sort of said to each other, what do you see? What do you think the answer is? Well, the church at that time had two banners that were hanging up, one on this side of the altar and one on this side. And the one on this side of the altar said, Go ye therefore, <laughs> and teach all nations. And the other one over here said, Moved by the Spirit. <laughs> In his own way, God spoke to us. And we decided then and there that God wanted us to accept the call to Prince George. And we went there. And it was tough because the congregation had dismissed the pastor and, and they needed some rebuilding and, and <clears throat> some of the people didn't, didn't trust others and they didn't trust us. And it was, well, I was the pastor. I would go around and visit people. It was easier for me because I went and, and uh, made contact with people but Marilyn had to wait about two years until someone was ready to call her a friend. It was hard, but it was God's call. And it was a wonderful, wonderful experience of working in God's mission field. Wow. The call to ministry in 1984 to Stony Plain was unexpected. And if anyone would have told me that I would have become, accepted the call and become a pastor of the oldest church in the ABC district, a very conservative congregation with a very strong and set ideas, I would have said, who, me? Happy-go-lucky Harold? I don't believe it. But God took us to Stony Plain. And that was a wonderful experience of building the kingdom there. And then All Saints in Edmonton. I accepted the call there in 1991 and they too had dismissed a pastor. And they too had had, for almost a year, an interim pastor, <clears throat> you know him, George Road. And he paved the way and made it possible for me to go and, and stay there for a while. So how long did I stay in that mission field? <laughs> 17 years. Yeah. It was wonderful. Wonderful blessings there. Well, there's always ups and downs. There were a lot of challenges too. But it was God's field. And then in 2008, I formally retired from the parish ministry. But I still got calls from God. <laughs> And so I became vacancy pastors in various locations. God was calling me to continue to serve. So I served as a vacancy pastor in Vegreville, in Tomahawk, in Mellowdale, in Bethlehem Lutheran in Edmonton, in Bethany Fort Saskatchewan, 
at Trinity Lacombe for three years, and now here. Jesus says to James and John and Simon and Andrew, who are out there fishing, he says, I want you to leave your job that you're doing here, and I want you to follow me. And they left the security of that which they did the best to be Jesus' disciples, to be fishers of men. There are some men who have left their secure jobs to go back to school and follow the Lord and become pastors at the seminary because God called them. And that was a hard thing to do, leave behind what you've done before and, and what your family is depending on for a paycheck and going back to study and, and incurring debt to become a pastor. That was hard, but it was the right thing to do. And every one of those men, and there are a number that I'm thinking of in my mind right now, they say, best thing I ever did, the hardest thing I ever did. There are members of this congregation who have felt, I couldn't do that. Maybe God's asking me to do that, but I don't think I could do that. And instead of looking at what God had in mind, they look at what they have in mind. And it's important to look at what God is saying and what God wants me to do when he calls me. And he calls you to do things in life. Follow his call, not yours. It might be scary, but do that. Our ways are very different sometimes from the Lord's. We, we tend toward remembrance, holding on to the things that we used to do, that we're comfortable, that we've grown accustomed to. But the Lord calls us away from remembrance to mission. New opportunities, new fields, new vision. In our remembering, we often grow nostalgic. Nostalgia is romanticizing the past. Remembering the past in unreal ways. We remember things that were never there. What we call the good old days were certainly the old days, but we never thought that they were good when we went through them at the time. <laughs> and sometimes we long for the past that was never there instead of the mission that is right here and real before us. God calls you and me, each one of us, to a real mission, a real life that lies ahead. He calls us away from remembrance that would divert us, away from nostalgia that would deceive us, and asks us to go where he is boldly already gone, where he leads us, where he has a task for us to do, a future and a destiny waiting. A year ago, we used to think that the world out there and the things of the world were pretty secure and stable. But we don't think that anymore. We're coming to see that just isn't so. But God holds the key to our future in his hands. We have to follow where he leads, in the way he leads, where he wants us to go. He has come that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. 
remembrance to keep us back in the past nostalgia to take us to a past that was never really there or mission to follow the calling and the will of God which one of these will it be well I know why you're here <laughs> and you know why I'm here because my job is mission here at Grace Camrose or wherever God might subsequently call me your job is mission at Grace or wherever God wants you to be and our job is following the call of our Lord wherever and whatever because we know who is calling and we know who's in charge as we pointed out last week he's with us in all places Genesis 28 and he's with us at all times Matthew 28 God doesn't always do things our way Marilyn and I certainly found that out many times in our life especially in 76 84 91 and after 2008 yeah ever since my retirement in 2008 I've received the call of God and <laughs> I must say I'm certainly glad that he has led me to follow his call to do his things not mine and it's been a fulfilling experience a life-giving experience a wonderful adventure with God and God calls you to do the same just listen each day what is God asking me to do where is he asking me to go who does he want me to talk to what, what opportunities are there to do his mission here where I am I want to leave you with a little wisdom that I received printed on a card the year that I was called to All Saints Lutheran Church in Edmonton in 1991 it proclaims a mission and I think it can really help us during this pandemic year I asked God to take away my pride and God said no it was not for him to take it away it was for me to give it up I asked God to make my dying family member whole and God said no their spirit is already whole their body is just temporary I asked God to grant me patience and he said no he said patience is the byproduct of tribulation he doesn't just give it it's earned I asked God to give me happiness and he said no I give you the blessings the happiness is up to you I asked God to spare me pain and he said no he said I must grow and he will prune me and pain me to help me to grow I asked God if he loved me and he said yes he gave his only son to die for me and I'll be in heaven when I die because I believe what Jesus has done for me I ask God to help me love others love others as much as he loves me and God said ah finally now now you have the idea don't look back don't look at what you have right now look ahead 
and follow me. Get involved in mission and ministry. Now you have the idea. Mission and ministry for me. Ministers of God. And I address you that way. I might be your vacancy pastor, but you are the ministers for God, each one of you. So ministers of God, listen for the call of God. Follow the call of God and rejoice in the ministry that he has for you. Amen.
Let's stand as we profess our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we unite our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. Father God, your love is steadfast and your mercy is forever. You show us your amazing grace each day in our lives, not that we always see and appreciate it. You feed us, you clothe us, you protect us and surround us with blessings and freedoms. Open our eyes to what is really going on and open our hearts and our mouths to praise you. Lord, in your mercy. Our cities need your word and your prophets as much as Nineveh did. We're ashamed of our failures, Lord. We have often behaved as children of the world rather than as your children. We know that you want us to take up your mission, but instead sometimes we set down our tools and we go the other way for our lack of zeal in taking up your task. Forgive us, Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all those who are ill today, at home, in the hospital, for those we know need our prayers. We pray for Suzanne's mom, Barbara, Marilyn Olson's mom, Gwen. We pray for Frank Vesely, Art Adams, and others who are shut in by the COVID virus. We pray for Eric Reuter, who's not here today, even though he would like to be here today because he listened to your call and he, he drove one of the persons to the hospital and back and, and uh, now he's quarantined for two weeks because of exposure to the virus. But he tested positive, we thank you for that. And we pray that you'd be with him in this time of isolation. But be with all those who are sick, who are shut down, who are shut in because of illness. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for Judy Goodhart whose mother Lorraine died last week. And for two sisters, Tracy and Tammy, and those who are struggling with, with the death of a person they loved so much. Comfort them and strengthen them with your loving, powerful presence. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our neighbors in the United States as they deal with the change of leadership and for our nation as we reaffirm our connections to them. Lord, in your mercy. Bless us in our voters meeting today. Grant us your direction, your strength. Help us to see the vision that you have for us. And then, Lord, help us to move forward together as a congregation of people 
who really want to do your will and your work. Lord, in your mercy, we pray today for Greg Chos, who's in the Ukraine, and for his wife, Chris, and, and family. We pray for missions in Nicaragua. We pray for our support of missions around the world. Lord, in your mercy, give us grace to trust you during this time of isolation and aloneness. In mercy, put an end to the epidemic that afflicts us. Help us not only to experience your presence, but to feel your closeness to us. Lord, in your mercy. These and all other petitions we have, we ask in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Would you all please rise as we prepare for Holy Communion? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. Yes, it is truly good, right, and proper that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord our God, King of all creation. For you have had mercy on us, and you have given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink this, do it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
cake and drink. One of our own and the same with Jesus. You belong to the world. This is your opinion. concerned because I mentioned that Eric Roeder tested positive. I meant to say that he tested negative. Okay. <laughs> so that, but he still has to be uh, quarantined until 
um, into February. So he cannot be here for two weeks. God is blessed, yes. And this is why you have a wife, to remind you of <laughs> things that you say when... <laughs> God is here, and God is gracious. Take and eat the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given for you. Take and drink the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for you. Out of the depths I cry to you, in darkness places I will call, incline your ear to me on you. And hear my cry for mercy, Lord. Were you to count my sinful ways, how could I come before your throne? Yet full forgiveness meets my case. I stand redeemed by grace alone. I will wait for you. I will wait for you, for your word I will rely. I will wait for you, surely wait for you, till my soul is satisfied. So put your hope in God alone, take courage in his power to save, completely and forever one, by Christ emerging from the grave. His steadfast love has made a way, and God himself has paid the price that all who trust in him today find healing in his sacrifice. I will wait for you, I will wait for you, on your word I will I will wait for you, I will wait for you, 
scenes of deepest gloom sometimes we're reading bowers bloom by what is calm or troubled sea it is god's hand that leadeth me Let us rise for prayer. We pray together. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this life-giving gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Please be seated. Before, before we complete our service, I just want to remind you, yes, we have a voters meeting. Um, and we're going to take about 15 minutes, stretch your legs, go downstairs, use the washroom, then come right back up here. The meeting will take place up here following the worship service. Thank you. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. are good all your ways are sure I will trust in you alone higher than my sight high above my life I will trust in you alone 
Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Where you love, I'll love. How you serve, I'll serve. If this life I lose, I will follow you. I will follow you. Light into the world, light into my life. I will leave for you alone. One I seek, knowing I will find. All I need is you alone. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Who you love, I'll love. How you serve, I'll serve. If this life I lose, I will follow you. I will follow you. In you there's life everlasting. In you there's freedom for my soul. In joy and ending joy. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. Where you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Whom you love, I love. How you serve, I'll serve. In this life I lose, I will follow you.